Hello, I welcome you all for this presentation. Uh, this presentation is about oxygen toxicity. Oxygen toxicity depends upon these factors. First is how much oxygen was given, the exposure time of the patient to the oxygen and the partial pressure of the oxygen. So all these factors are directly proportional to the damage caused by oxygen. So oxygen, the more the oxygen and the more the exposure time and more the partial pressure of the oxygen, the more will be the damage done to the lungs. So what exactly happens if the patient continues to breathe oxygen as, at 100%? First, there is pulmonary effects, the neurological effects and the effects on the eyes. So pulmonary condition, it was previously called as Lorenz Smith effect because it's named after the person Lorenz Smith who identified it. The most important symptoms which happen because of uh, oxygen toxicity are difficulty in breathing, shortness of breath, inflammation of the trachea and the bronchi, tracheobronchitis. It can lead to excessive coughing and it can reduce the vital capacity. The neurological symptoms which can be seen when the uh, patient breathes oxygen at 100%. Previously, it was called as Paul Burt effect, similar to the... Uh, uh, Paul Burt is the person who identified it. The CNS uh, symptoms are convulsions, tonic-clonic seizures, loss of consciousness, twitching especially of the face, anxiety and dizziness. The next are the effect of oxygen, breathing oxygen on the eyes, especially in premature infants, it leads to retinopathy of prematurity. What happens because of uh, breathing oxygen at 100% is the excessive blood oxygen level can cause retinal vasoconstriction and can lead to uh, death of the or the necrosis of the blood vessels. And this as this happens, what in response to the necrosis, uh, new vessels start to form and the hemorrhage in these new vessels leads to scarring behind the retina and this can eventually lead to blindness. So due to oxygen toxicity, it leads to interstitial edema. What happens next is it leads to damage of the capillary endothelium, the capillary endothelium of the alveoli and this damaged capi capillary endothelium can lead to thickening of the alveolocapillary membrane. Now alveolocapillary membrane has the function of uh, taking up the oxygen inside the blood. So the diffusion or the taking up of oxygen happens at the alveolocapillary level. Now because of the damage to the capillary endothelium, this exchange of gases does not take place. And as the uh, membrane thickens, uh, there is loss of ventilation to that alveoli. And when there is reduced ventilation, it can increase this shunting. And ultimately what happens is the air cannot reach the alveolar capillary membrane and it can lead to a reduced V by Q ratio. V is the ventilation and Q is the perfusion. So as the ventilation reduces, uh, or as the ventilation uh, uh, decreases because of the damaged capillary endothelium, it can lead to a reduction in this V by Q ratio and leads to V by Q mismatch. Ultimately, due to this, the partial pressure of oxygen is reduced. And again, to increase this PaO2, as seen in the ABG, arterial blood gases, there is a need to increase this FiO2 to increase this PO2 again. So, because of this, again, the FiO2 or the fraction of inspired oxygen, percentage of oxygen needs to be increased. So, because of oxygen toxicity, it can lead to a condition again where there is hypoxemia. And this hypoxemia, for compensating this hypoxemia, you need to increase the uh, uh, oxygen given more. And this can again lead to oxygen toxicity. So this is a very vicious cycle which happens. Thank you all for listening to this presentation.